To enable Zerto to replicate into Microsoft Azure or AWS, you're going to need to deploy a Zerto Cloud Appliance, which is a Zerto Virtual Manager and a Virtual Replication Appliance, all in one, running in a Windows VM or instance in the public cloud. For Azure, you're going to need a standard DS3 v2 VM, which you can deploy from the marketplace. And for AWS, you're going to need an M4 Extra Large EC2 instance. You need to have built-in networking between your environments. So from your on-premise ZVM VRAs, you need to have at least a VPN connection up into the network that the ZCA is deployed and attached to in Azure or AWS. You then need to download the ZCA installation files to the VM ready to install. And first, we're going to start by showing you the installation of Azure. Again, you can do a, an express installation or custom. And for this demo, we're just going to stick to express and not use our own certificate. And the simple thing it's going to ask for here is to authenticate against the Azure account on which you're going to deploy this Zerto Cloud Appliance to. So I'll just put in my information here. You have to make sure that this VM has internet access so that you can successfully authenticate against your account. This is now successfully authenticated, so we can select the subscription that I want to use when creating the VMs in a recovery scenario, the default directory, and then the region, which is automatically detected because whichever region I deploy the Zerto of Cloud Appliance into is where I'm gonna to replicate to. One thing you need to make sure is that your account that you just specified here is configured as a subscription owner, which is not the default behavior, so you need to go in and edit that. We click Next. It's asking for the IP address, which is going to allow us to communicate to our on-premise ZVM and VRAs, and then a site name. I've actually cheated in my environment here where I'm doing a reverse VPN because this is from my home lab. I actually have a softie for VPN connecting my Azure and AWS ZCAs back to my on-premise environment. But typically in an enterprise, you would have a VPN connecting your on-premise into your public cloud. Click next, next. It's now gonna validate out and we'll click run. While waiting for that, we can kick off the exact same installation process in my AWS environment. So I go over to my EC2 instance. Here you can see I've got the ZCA installer for AWS. And slightly different here, rather than authenticating with an online account, it's going to ask for our access key ID and secret access key, which you need to generate from your IAM settings. Keep these secure. Next. It will validate out that we can successfully authenticate. All of the replica data in AWS is stored in S3 and it will automatically create an S3 bucket for the replica data in Azure, it's just stored in as blob storage in a storage account. We can now proceed with the installation. And when this is finished, we can come back and now we can check on the progress of my installation in Azure. We can see this is now done. And if I open up the Zerto interface, I can apply my trial license key. See now, I apply the license. And this Zerto manager is now ready for me to pair to my on-premise VMware or Hyper-V site to enable replication into the cloud, which I do from clicking pair here. And then I put in my on-premise Zerto manager IP address. You can do this from either site to one-time operation. That's now paired and we can repeat the exact same process in AWS.
So now we can see that from my on-premise VMware environment, it is now paired to Azure, AWS, Hyper-V, vSphere, which is now gonna allow me to create replication protection groups from one environment to multiple different versions of hypervisors, clouds, all from the same interface. A couple of quick tips for recovery scenarios is there are default quotas and limits within Azure and AWS that you're going to want to remove or change before you start recovering any VMs at scale. So in Azure, you need to create a help desk ticket and increase the number of cores available in the region that you've selected. The default is 10. You're gonna to wanna to increase that to the total number of cores that you're gonna be recovering in the VMs. And then for AWS, you're gonna to wanna to change two main settings, the instance limit. So that's a maximum of 20 by default. If you're gonna recover 50 VMs, it needs to be 50. And you also want to ask for the EC2 import instance volume limit to be changed to the total number of volumes that you're going to be recovering. The default is five, which means it will only concurrently process five imports of volume simultaneously, which many people are wanna, gonna want to increase. Once you've done this, the next step is creating the protection groups. 